Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm answering y'all's burning questions on my career and insights I've gained through being a professional artist. Thanks again for all the love I received on my previous video, Another Year, Another Layoff. And I hope in this video I can provide some further insight and help you navigate your own artistic journey. Real quick recap, I'm a compositor with four years of experience in television animation. I graduated with an animation degree in 2020 and have been persevering through the industry challenges over the last couple years. All right, I'll be answering from both Instagram and YouTube, but I will be starting with YouTube. Do you feel like it's worth taking the risk of going to animation school right now? Personally, this is really complicated for me. I had a really good time in art school and I had professors that really helped me kind of develop into my style. I never really felt like I was being molded into an artist that I wasn't. And when I entered art school, I didn't have any knowledge of how to do animation and I left equipped with that knowledge plus other filmmakers making skills. So for me, like my investment in that has been super worth it because everything that I learned in school has been transferable to like other things. I could do motion design. I could be a video editor. I can do more than just work in TV animation. And if you're down to do other creative things besides work in TV animation, I would say it's worth it. But if you're going there with the pretense that this is the like the only thing that I want to do because it's such a competitive field I would just be wary of narrowing your scope of skills too much I hope that makes sense I'm only saying this because clearly right now we're going through like a drought of animation projects being greenlit we're facing AI there are a ton of other things I could personally be doing besides working in TV animation because of the skills that I developed in college if you're okay with the idea of not using your degree in your field but being able to take advantage of the skills that you learned throughout college then I would say yes go for it but if it's one plus one equals two and there's no other like avenues that you're interested in exploring I might not recommend it how do you balance creating for yourself small business your YouTube and freelance or long-term jobs any insights on time management or energy levels in being creative I'm kind of in a little bit of a new territory right now because right now I'm self-employed and I'm trying to build a little bit more structure into my days I obviously noticed that like working a nine-to-five my day had like a structure and a rhythm but the absence of it is really interesting because I think a lot of people are like oh I wish I didn't have a job I wish I could just like chill and do whatever but just chilling and doing whatever it sometimes too can be like oh my gosh I'm what am I doing I'm not working on anything meaningful and so I've been trying to structure my day using a platform called Asana and if you like to see that planning setup definitely let me know down below I'm definitely like try to be organizational project management girly but like I know to an extent that kind of stuff is really nitty-gritty and I don't know if it would be very interesting but if that's something that you'd be interested in seeing let me know but yeah right now I'm using Asana but when I was working my full-time job I just made sure that I blocked out a couple hours in the evening to make stuff blocked out time with my partner and chores and stuff and just tried to keep a balance in that way I think when you think about your time in chunks it becomes a little bit easier to kind of make progress. Progress doesn't have to mean like, oh, I'm gonna spend an entire day working on something. Sometimes it can just be really small steps. And as long as you're making time for those really small steps day to day, then like whatever it is you're trying to work on will, you know, eventually get done in time. All that said, it's a balancing act. Even when I'm thinking about that time in chunks, it's not like purely regimented every time. But I think the effort to try to block out that time is really important. Also, as far as energy levels go if you're not feeling it you're not feeling it sometimes you do have to just kind of like sit down and power through that art block especially if you're trying to get something done by a certain time I'm also like a strong believer of like hey if I'm not feeling it right now like I'm gonna live a little and let myself be refreshed before I return back to my tasks so just take care of yourself how to get your dream job in the animation industry. Also, any advice for animation practice? So obviously I'm not working like my dream job in animation. I don't know that I even have a dream job anymore. But you know, if I was trying to work towards getting a particular role, here are a couple things that I would do. 
finding work, especially in a creative industry, is all about connections. I feel like it's like 60% the people that you know and like 40% stellar portfolio. In trying to get your dream role, definitely be a part of the community that could make that happen for you. That means like getting on Twitter and engaging with other folks in animation. If you're interested in children's cartoons or adult animation, you know, being able to get connected with those folks in some way. Could be Twitter or LinkedIn or showing up to mixers or going to animation specific cons. It's so important to just meet other people that are working in the field that you're interested in being in and not in an opportunistic way. I think that's big too and I feel like artists have a sixth sense for when people are just trying to befriend them to get opportunity. The animation community is so small and you don't necessarily want to come across as like, hey, I'm only being your friend because you're connected to the right people. And you shouldn't be. Getting your dream role like involves putting yourself in front of the right people, but it also is like, hey, these are people you might be working alongside with one day. And like, you want those people to be your friends. You want to be in like a job role and be friendly with your coworkers, you know? So I feel like just trying to have a circle of people that that are interested in the same things that you are interested in or interested in working on is really important. Plus the obvious, you definitely need like a laser focused portfolio to kind of show off the thing that you're trying to get into. So yeah, I would say those two combinations of things would help you get a little bit closer to your dream role. Not guaranteed because there's a lot of things going on in the industry, but those are like tips that I would give if I was trying to get like a dream role. Also, as far as animation practice goes, I mean, animation practice could look like anything. It could be practicing the principles or doing like an animated short, a TikTok style video where you're animating to like a popular sound. It could be making a film. I think there's nothing super specific that you would need to do. I think it's just do it. Practice in general will just take you far. Practice your principles and just animate as if you have your own cartoon and you'll learn a lot that way. Have I come across animators using traditional methods of making animation with peg bars and animation paper? No, not in the US. I think a lot of paper animation is happening over overseas. A lot of animation is outsourced out there and many of the projects that I have personally worked on use industry standard software like Harmony. But I don't speak for all of animation. I am on the comp side. I'm past animation, post-production. It may take place more than I know, but I do know that a lot of traditional animation is outsourced. What's one thing you wish was common knowledge amongst people who have never animated or don't know much about animation? I feel like there's always that one thing every field wishes everyone knew. This one might be a little bit of a hot take, but I I don't really like videos where there's like breakdowns of animation for, you know, cartoons because I think there are a lot of talented artists working on these shows, but you might not see that talent shine through because of behind the scenes budget cuts or like tight deadlines. Unfortunately, like as a professional artist, we do take a lot of shortcuts and sometimes too many that can be kind of, you know, spotted by someone who might not do animation for a living. I know from an audience perspective, people are looking at the work and being like, oh my gosh, that was so cheap. I don't like that. This animation sucks. I don't think that's a reflection of the animator's skill. I think it's a reflection of how much time did they have to do that? Now I will agree, like some shortcuts are better than others. And like sometimes if you need to take a shortcut to get something done, like make sure that, you know, it's not so obvious that it's distracting to an audience. But yeah, I just kind of wish like there was more grace for people that work in animation because animators work so hard on projects. This one is more related to my shop, Pretty Magical. What's something you would have done differently starting your business? Also, any thoughts on Shopify and Etsy? I started my business in 2021 and I think 
Like, if I could go back in time, the biggest thing that I would have done differently was try to separate my personal finances and my business finances sooner. Like having a business credit card or a business debit card to spend on products and, you know, general shop supplies. Because it's such a pain during tax season to go through and like try to look at all of my expenses and categorize them as business or personal finances. So make sure you keep good books is all I'm saying. That's my advice. Cause otherwise come tax season, it just sucks. It really does just suck. Also my thoughts on Shopify and Etsy, very difficult question. Cause I'm thinking about going back to Etsy right now. Although I've heard like heard some kind of unsavory things about their platform now but i use shopify for my site just because i wanted more of a custom build it is a little bit harder when you're using your own website because you're responsible for driving traffic versus etsy's search engine optimization and the organic traffic that happens on etsy so i think even to go back to your initial question of what would i have done differently i might have started with an etsy account rather than like i started with a big cartel account and had to drive my own traffic Etsy is a really good platform if you don't have like a huge social media following already to like kind of get people to see your work more immediately because you're not having to funnel traffic there yourself all the time. However, those Etsy fees, that's a whole other thing. Dang, it is getting dark. It's like a partly cloudy day and like I thought it was going to be more sunny, but it's pretty cloudy. I'm sorry if the lighting keeps changing. I try to use natural light in my videos and the natural light is, you know, barely lighting right now. I'm currently on a journey to learn the fundamentals of drawing with goals of being an animator to bring my ideas to life. Any advice for people like myself in this position? I've been drawing each day and working hard since my major in school is IT and not art. Any advice for people like myself in this position? I think you're on a great path and I don't think you need to major in art to have a career in art if that's what you know you're kind of getting at here being an artist is more about the practice rather than having the degree to back it up i would say keep going with your goals having good drawing skills is definitely super important as an animator and if you can incorporate small animations into your practice that would you know help you reach your goals a little bit faster which actually kind of leads me into the next question do you have any book recommendations on animation and drawing in general i would recommend the animator survival kit by Richard Williams. There is a ton of information in this book to help you figure out walk cycles, squash and stretch, really like a lot of the principles of animation. I reach for this book even to this day when I can't figure out how to animate something or just need a refresher on basic principles. What do you do to support yourself during your layoff seasons? I've actually never really had a layoff season before. This is my first time of like being unemployed for a really long time. For the last four years, I've been able to line up work pretty much like within weeks of me, you know, having my contracted end date. And so the longest that I've ever been without work has been three to four weeks. And during that time, you know, I'm usually relying on my savings. It's really important to save as a person working in the arts or I've applied for unemployment, which I think is something that people should talk about a little bit more. Filing for unemployment post animation is a really regular and normal thing to do if you're working in the entertainment industry. Having a career in the arts means you need to be a little bit money conscious and like be prepared for the off chance of like a huge layoff season. So, so yeah, it's pretty much a non-negotiable that you need to be saving while you're employed full time at your gig. You really never know how long your layoff off season is going to last and you just want to be prepared for that. Would love to learn about how you got your foot in the door and how you make a living. So my career started back in 2020. I worked freelance for about six months after graduating from college. And then after incessantly applying and taking tests for one particular studio, I ended up being hired as a compositor late 2020. I had taken a storyboard test and an animation test for Wolf Boy and the Everything Factory. And eventually, I was called up randomly for an interview for compositing. My supervisor at the time had come across my portfolio and he thought I might be a good fit as a compositor and also potentially a retake animator, which I ended up realizing I didn't really like doing animations. 
I just kind of stuck with comp for some years. But yeah, he was only able to pull my portfolio and make that determination because I just kept applying and they just kept reaching out to me to take different tests on Wolf Boy and the Everything Factory. And ever seen or watched the show, it's a very cute and magical show. I so badly wanted to work on it after I took my first test, which was the storyboarding test. And even though I ended up doing comp on it, I was just super glad to be a part of the process. What were your favorite cartoons growing up and did they influence your work as a compositor? So well, some of my favorite shows growing up Definitely Steven Universe, Adventure Time, regular show. Um, I really enjoyed Bee and Puppy Cat, and that's the one that I would say really influenced my style as a compositor. The color grading and the effects in Bee and Puppy Cat are just so dreamy and beautiful and rich, and I just, I loved it. It wasn't actually until recently when I worked on Hit Monkey that I felt like I got to apply some of that to the shots that I was doing because I worked on primetime comedies for a really long time that didn't require that kind of like lighting setup that Bee and Puppy Cat so often utilizes but yeah those are a couple cartoons that I grew up watching and really loved and feel like still influenced my style today. Oh and Gravity Falls too. I really liked Gravity Falls. <laughs> I think that's it as far as questions go. I hope this kind of shed some light on my career and my journey as an artist. If you liked this Q&A style video, I do have a Patreon that you can subscribe to where I do Q&A style podcasts, which of course will be linked down below. Patreon is a great way to support me as an artist if you enjoy my content and would love to see more in the future. But yeah, again, thank you guys for watching and I hope to see y'all in the next video. Bye guys.